got your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to the Gospel of John, chapter number 10. God, John's Gospel, chapter number 10. I trust that you'll pray for us tonight, that the Lord will help us for just a few moments. And uh, we want to give you exactly what the Lord would have us to and uh, get out of the way. Amen. And uh, trust that uh, the Lord's been good to you today. Yeah. And uh, the fact that you're here, I tell my crowd, North Carolina all the time, I said the fact that you're above ground, not at a hospital or funeral home, is evidence of God's goodness to you. Amen. Right. Right. Amen. Yeah. And uh, thank God. He said, uh, He said, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Ain't that right? That's right. right. Are you breathing? Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. 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 Somebody said, well, I think you ought to do that. Uh -oh. If you're breathing, come on. God right. said you're to be praised. That's right. right. Amen. Right. Right. Some say I'm waiting on a feeling. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Waiting on somebody to call on me. Yeah. Waiting on this. Waiting on. Yeah. If you're breathing, you're a candidate. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. Amen. Amen. And we're way behind. We're we're caught up on a lot of things. We're caught up a lot on gossip and social media. And we're probably even caught up on your latest TV series that you like. Uh -oh. But uh, there's one thing that I guarantee you you're behind. The only same thing I am. That's praising God. Right. Right. Ain't you glad? Thank God He come to where you was at one day and got you out of hell yeah. and put a little yeah. heaven in your soul. That's right. One day. Gonna get to go there. Yeah, right. And I tell my crowd all the time, I wouldn't smile or nothing. We're just going to heaven. Yeah. I wouldn't act happy or anything. I mean, we're just going to heaven. I mean, don't get excited. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. But uh, and I say that jokingly, and I'm glad you're here. Yes. Amen. I'm glad to be here with y'all at, at, at this revival meeting this week. And again, I thank the, uh, everyone for the arrangements, the food, and all the things you've done for us to make us comfortable while we're 800 and some miles away from home. Amen. Amen. Uh, preacher's wife said today, she said, you're missing your wife, your honey, ain't you? Uh-oh. And about that time, my phone dinged, and I looked, and she sent me a big teddy bear with a heart, and I just <laughs> turned it around and showed it to her. I said, yeah, I ain't. Amen. 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 Yeah. And, uh, but I'm, I'm glad to be here. This yes, is what sir. God called me to do. Amen. And uh, it's, uh, this is why I'm in this world in this hour. Amen. It was in the God's plan that I, He knew before the foundation of the world that I, what, I, what I was going to be. He knew who was going to be in this service today. Amen. Amen. He knew what we needed to hear. Amen. And boy, wasn't that singing good to play? Thank God. John chapter number 10, you, uh, you read with us here in verse number 1, John chapter 10. And I'm not going to preach anything new tonight, but Paul said, uh, uh, I think it's Paul, maybe Peter. Peter, I guess it was, said that I need to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. And sometimes it does us good to be reminded of where Amen. God brought us from and where we're going. Amen. 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 And uh, the devil sure does, doesn't waste any time reminding you of a lot of things, does That's right. That's <laughs> right. he? Because he might remind anybody here of your past. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. Has he beat you up with your past? Amen. When was the last time you looked at him and said, Devil, my sins are gone. Amen. 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 My past is gone. Yes. Thank God. He gave me a new birth, Amen. a new beginning, a new starting place. And I bless his name for it. John chapter 10, verse number 1. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door of the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. Right. But he that entereth in by the door is, uh, is the shepherd of the sheep. Yeah. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. Amen. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth, uh, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Amen. And a stranger will they not follow but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Right. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door Amen. of the sheep. Amen. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, mm -hmm. but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they may have life and that they might have it more 
abundantly. Amen. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life <laughs> for the sheep. Amen. Father, thank you for the portion of Scripture you directed our hearts to. I pray, God, that you would enable us now for just a few moments to say what needs to be said. I pray, God, that you'd use us tonight to be a blessing to this congregation. God, I realize we've all struggled in these days, and, and there, God, we're dealing with all kinds of problems around us. But I pray, God, for just a few moments tonight, may you remind us of who you are and, God, where we're at in the journey and show us, God, where we're going in a few days after a while. Help us now, I pray, uh, to help this congregation and this people touch this congregation, this pastor, stir in our hearts and revive us again that our, our hearts may rejoice in you and we'll praise you in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to preach for a little while if the Lord will help me on when God brings you to the door. Amen. When God brings you to the door. Now before I can get to the message, I've got to give you a, a little bit of a lengthy introduction more than I typically do. Uh, but I've got to, the Lord's oppressing me with this. And, and so I want to be obedient to Him and give you exactly what He wants me to. Uh, the Lord here is speaking to these followers and He begins to explain to them uh, how He's going to attend, how He's going to care for the sheep. Yeah. Now they tell me that a, a shepherd in those days would uh, would bring those sheep in and say each shepherd maybe had a, a 50 uh, a sheep or more and, and they would bring them to the place in the evening time and they would bring them into the sheepfold right. and they got there they would put their sheep and there may be 8 or 10 shepherds uh, uh, that bring their sheep and, and would leave them in that sheepfold and and there was a man who was set aside uh, to be the porter or who was the doorkeeper. Right. And the Bible said that, uh, uh, the, the Bible teaches us that, and history teaches us that that porter's job was to lay down in the door, uh, thank God, of that sheepfold. Nobody could come into the sheepfold uh, without coming through him. Nobody could get out uh, without going through him. Amen. He was there, thank God, uh, to keep the sheep in yep. and the wolves and the lions out. Amen. Amen. He was there, thank God, uh, to tend and to care for those sheep Amen. in the absence of the shepherd. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. And uh, there's so much said about sheep. And I've got to hurry to get to where I'm going. Uh, but in Matthew chapter 9, he said, uh, he said we're all going to stray like a sheep without a shepherd. Uh, in Matthew 10, uh, he says, I send you forth the sheep amongst wolves. In Matthew 18, he said, the shepherd leaves the nine and nine and goes looking for one little lost lamb. Done a study, and they reported that the intelligence of a sheep 
is just below Brother Ronald that of the average pig. Uh, he's not bragging on us when he calls us sheep. He's not bragging about how smart we are. Amen. Thank God. Sheep are born according to uh, this study. Sheep are born uh, with very few hardwired abilities. They come with the ability of a sucking reflex. Come on. Yeah. Right. To nurse that mom. Yeah. Right. Amen. They come, I thank God, with a maternal. Those the females come with a maternal instinct. Right. Right. Amen. Right. And they come, thank God, with an instinct to reproduce. Yeah. Right. Boy, that ain't saying a whole lot about them, is it? Uh, no wonder the Lord compared us to sheep. Right. Uh, you say, well, what's that sucking reflex? I, I see a whole lot of Baptists uh, spend most of their time with their thumb in their mouth. Right. Right. Pouting about something somebody said. Uh, something somebody did 25 years ago. Come on, man. Come on. Uh, amen. And they sit and they... Uh, Amen. Come on. Amen. God will help us uh, to realize that God wants more for us, uh, thank God, than us to be babies in Christ. Paul said, I desired uh, to give you meat, uh, thank God. But he said, you had not developed enough yet, so I had to get a bottle out, I had to get a nipple out, and I had to give you meal. He said, you should be teaching others. Is that what he said? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Help us, Lord. Come on. Go ahead, man. Sheep, thank God. Sheep, I wrote some things down. I'll give them to you. Sheep have a, have a their, their only instinct when attacked is to flee. Right. 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 Uh, Boy. I noticed that being a Baptist preacher. You always see them running away anytime the battle gets hot. Right. Right. Come on. Amen. Amen. Going, but when they cannot flee, thank God for times that they can't, they huddle up in, a, in that flock together. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And it's even known, been known for uh, some of those Jews to attack the wolf or the lion, uh, thank God, in defense of their babies. Amen. Yeah. Well, I wonder, God, I could get some mamas and grandmamas stirred up and to charge hell and say, you're not getting mine. Amen. Amen. I thank God. I mean, it may cost me everything. I may die right here, but you're not getting my babies. Can I say this? Will you take this? God has no grandchildren. That's right. That's right. There's a whole lot of people, and you may be here and be young and think you're going to ride Mama and Papa's coattails in the glory. No, no. Yeah. Maybe clinging to mom and daddy's testimony and their church membership. But I'm going to tell you, thank God, God has no grandchildren. Yeah. You're either a child of God or you're none yeah. of His. That's right. That's Amen. 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 Now, I'm glad, thank God, uh, that you're still hanging on to mom and daddy. Uh, but thank God, that faith needs to be imparted into your heart. Uh, and right. thank God, you need to be uh, right. uh, like Timothy over there. Uh, Paul break on his mom and his grandma. Right. And he said that same faith is now in you, Timothy. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. Right. Help us, Lord. Indeed. Amen. Come on. Well, when sheep, sheep are alone, they become stressed. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. See, I do pretty good when I'm with the flock on Sunday. Come on. Come on, but when I get out there on the job on Monday through Friday, and amongst all the wolves and the lions and, and all the heathens, it's easy for me to get in a state of stressfulness. So the University of Illinois says, uh, that in order to ease the stress, boy, get this right here, they would take a mirror and put it in the stall with that sheep that felt like they were alone to where they could see another sheep. <laughs> Can I tell you, God gave us a mirror. Just need to get the mirror out. Amen. And look. 
Amen. Amen. Now, when Moses was fixing to bring them Hebrews out of Egypt, he said, I need you to get a lamb. Uh -huh. Then he said, the lamb. Uh -huh. Then he said, your lamb. Yeah. 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 And he said, a lamb for a house. Uh -huh. And he said, when I see the blood, now you could have slain that perfect lamb. It could have been without spot and without blemish. And your, you could have went and hid in the house. And the death angel would still showed up at your house and taken your firstborn. The blood in a basin wasn't good enough. A lamb being slain wasn't good enough. There had to be a lamb slain and the blood applied. Can I say that? Lord. Oh, God, help us. Come on. Well, they, uh, the positioning of the flock is coordinated, uh, correlated with social dominance. There's a social structure in the flock. Now, if given room, the rams and the ewes with their babies will separate. If they're out in the wild, they'll separate. You see that in all kinds of wildlife. I think that you see it in deer. You see it in turkeys. You even see it in cattle. If it's not breeding season, the bulls are interested in just hanging out in the shade together. Hey, man. Ain't that right? And so there's a social structuring that goes on according to God's purpose and His plan. Now, I need you to understand when it comes down to the house of God. I had no idea this was here. I'm just, just trying to preach it as it comes. It's coming faster than I can get it out. Uh, I, I had no idea, Brother, Brother Mayo, I was going to preach on the social structure in the house of God. But God set this thing up. I didn't set it up. The preacher didn't set it up. The Baptist didn't set it up. God set this thing in order. Amen. And he said, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself Amen. for it. Amen. Amen. That's good, brother. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wives, here's the social structure. Uh -oh. Submit yourselves right. unto your own husbands. Yes. That's right. Come on. I said this at the church about two weeks ago on Wednesday night. And I got some of the God is <laughs> And I'm going to say it here in Louisiana. Maybe y'all can take it. Some of you have got Cajun blood in you, maybe. You're a little tougher than our mountain people. Most of them are Scott Irish. <laughs> hey, man, they're an emotional people. Wait a minute. And uh, this is what I said. I said, some of you ladies are having problems in submission to your husbands in the exact same area you would not submit to your father. That's right. Oh, that's right. Go ahead. 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 It went over about like that in North Carolina. What is it the preacher said? Sometimes preaching's like chocolate covered steel. It tastes good, but it's hard to swallow. That's right. And uh, you hear me tonight. And I'm not preaching against you ladies. God, uh, I'm married to a lady. I've got two daughters. And I've got, I've got a mama that I love. And I had two grandmothers that loved me and prayed me into the family of God. Yes. I'm not being critical. I'm just saying there is a plan for each one of us in the order of God's creation. Ain't that right? Yes, right? I'm trying to get to the message. I'm still in the introduction. Amen. Amen. I'm trying. So, so in this sheep structure, now you know as good as I do, you can get down to the church house. And I saw it today over there after breakfast. The men went out yonder and sat, and the ladies went over there and sat. Oh, yeah. Ain't that right? Nobody had to say, I'll stay here. We're going over there. 
It just happened. And the Lord said, I told you what I wanted you to preach. And I'm showing it to you right here, even among the people of God. Amen. Now, there's an order of things. And when it comes down to the house of God, God has set some things in order in His house. Amen. Now, I don't know about you, I don't like anything that's out of order. Right, right. Nothing makes me more aggravated than a little Pepsi Cola or a cold Mountain Dew and there being an out of order sticker on the front of that machine. Amen. Amen. I can't get what I want because something's out of order. Right. And could it be that sinners are not getting what they need? Right. Saints are not getting what they need because something's out of order. Exactly. Right. Amen. I don't know nothing about this church and you people. I'm just preaching. Right. Amen. We've got a saying in the mountains of North Carolina. So let me let me say this so you'll be careful. Like when you throw a rock into a pack of dogs, the one that hollers is the one that got hit. <laughs> Does that make sense down here, Amen. 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 Yeah, amen. And uh, so, so be careful when you get in your car about what you say. Uh, yeah. Somebody's liable to think you're the one that got hit. Right. Amen. <laughs> amen. And the preacher ain't told me nothing, so so you just have to blame it on that redneck from North Carolina. Oh, yeah. Amen. Oh, preach, brother. Amen. Oh. Now these sheep have a social structure, and these babies are watching. Right. When. When, the, when they're called by that caretaker, Brother Ken Lynn was talking about this earlier this morning. About daylight, we was talking about this. Amen. And uh, he said out there at Warren Wilson College, which is right out from his house, uh -huh. he said, I was sitting out there watching them sheep one day, and he said, the fellow that keeps all them sheep, uh, take care of them, and he's like, charge all that. He pulled up and said, what are you doing? He said, I'm just sitting here watching sheep. Amen. And he said, uh, he said, I'm a Baptist preacher, and I like to learn a little bit about sheep. Uh, and uh, and that fellow made one call. Is that what you told me? One call. And he said that one you looked up there at him. Uh -huh. And she started toward him. Yeah. And he said nobody had to say anything else. Right. 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 They knew that she knew what was best right. for the flock. Right. right. And when the shepherd called and that uh, maternal you yeah. responded, yeah. all those other yous. All those other babies right. just fell in line yeah. and headed down there with her. Yeah. Right. Can I say this to you? If you'd rather go to the flea market or the movie theater on Sunday than the house of God, don't be surprised that them babies follow you. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. Help us, Lord. Indeed. I'm trying to get to the door. I just I'm hung up on these sheep right now. I may be all I get to tonight. We may preach about that door tomorrow night. I'm just trying to get us to understand that he said he said now the porter is taking care of the sheep. He said, now this is the porter is the man laying in the door. And they didn't get it. Yeah. Right. Right. They didn't understand what he was saying. Yeah. So they come to him and ask for an explanation. And he said, I am yeah. the dog. Yeah. Right. Yes, sir. Not only am I the good shepherd and my sheep know my voice and strings and they will yeah. He said, you need to understand I'm not only the shepherd, I'm the dog. That's right. yeah. I'm the one that kept the wolf at bay. Uh -huh. And the strays from leaving. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. That was Lord. Come on. Oh, God help us. Sheep have eyes that can see 298 to 325 degrees around them. And many times sheep have been documented to communicate with their eyes. Brother Ron, it'd be all right if I use you for an example right here. We was over there this morning, and we were sitting there talking about the things of God right. and how good God had been to him, yeah. and tears began to run down his face. Yeah. And when tears began to run down his face, uh -huh. it affected something in my heart. Right. Right. And his, that, that, that sheep's eyes right. affected this sheep's eyes. Right. And before I knew it, I was crying about what he was crying about. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's right. Amen. That's right. That's right. Hey, you know why? Because we're communicating heart to heart. That's right. Amen. 
If your preacher comes in Sunday and you can tell he's down, he don't need you to come around and say, well, preacher, you're pretty down today. Uh -oh. <laughs> I wish you'd preach something and get us all up. Uh -oh. It may be that you need to communicate with him Amen. with your eyes and, and as he's trying to preach, let a few oh. tears run down your face and say, help me, God, oh, that's my under shepherd. That's the one you sit here to help us. Help him, Lord, that he might help. And could it be that while those tears are running down your face and you're breathing that prayer, yeah. some little lamb sitting to the right or left yes, amen. might get something in their heart amen. for down the road. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Sheep learn most of everything they know by watching other sheep. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> So if a sheep cusses a little, uh -oh. Uh -oh. Go ahead. Go on now. if a sheep tells a few dirty jokes, uh -oh. Go ahead. Come on. Wait a minute. Help us, Lord. If a, if a sheep ain't what a sheep ought to be, it's teaching those little ones to follow in its footsteps. Uh, I've got people in our country and they'll come and they'll say, pray for my young ones that they'll get in church. And, I, and it breaks my heart because I've got a daughter that's astray. And I'll pray for her. She's 20, soon to be 21 years old. And she's going rebelling against everything mom and daddy's taught her. And it breaks my heart so I can sympathize with it. But I'm going to tell you, there's something about when I hear somebody say that, Pray that my daughter, pray that my son would be faithful to the house of God yes. when they've never had an example of faithfulness from their mom and dad. That's right. That's right. I don't know how it is in Louisiana, but in North Carolina, about 40% of the kids are being raised by their grandparents. Right. A brother said something to us in Kentucky a few days ago sitting at the lunch table. He said, and boy, I, I said, man, that's good stuff. I want to get that in my heart. He said, if you raise your children right, you can enjoy your grandchildren. He said, if you don't raise your children right, you'll have to raise your grandchildren. That's right. Yes, sir. Go ahead. I'm not throwing any rocks at face grandmas here and grandmas and pacos that are raising their grandbabies. I'm not throwing any rocks at you. I'm just trying to get you to understand that those kids are watching you and they're, they need a godly example. Amen. That's good, bro. They need, to, they need to know the way to the prayer closet. Indeed. Right. Amen. They need to know my mom and papa's got a place that may be down at the stump in the pasture somewhere yeah. or over in the barn stall. Yeah. And uh, I've got a dear, dear fellow that goes to our church and, and he got some health issues. He used to go to Brother Ken's and he couldn't drive that far. So he come to our church. And I'm so thankful. I'm not thankful he got, to, got old and he couldn't have it. But I'm glad he's with us. Amen. 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 And... Uh, He's got a saying, he's, he, he's got a barn stall up there that he prays in. Uh -huh. And when I get in trouble or burden in my soul about somebody, uh -huh. I pick up the phone and call that brother and I say, would you go to the barn for me? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. He don't have to wonder what I'm talking about. Oh, no. Several, several months ago, a lady in our church, he got to, he was going through Sunday school one Sunday morning, and a lady in our church got such burden that had her son's out of the house of God, and he's married and, and, and raising a family that's not his. And I mean, it's just a, it's, it's just a, it's just a wreck. Right. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. And she come in and had his learner's permit when he was a 15 year old, 16 year old kid. Had his picture on it. And I saw her, even these over our brother's head and handed it to him. And I went to him after I said, What did the sister give you? And he showed me that boy's picture. And uh -huh. she said, Would you take that up there and tack it on the wall on. in the barn stall? Yeah. And every time you go to that barn stall, would you pray for my boy yeah. that God will touch his heart, that God bring him back? Are you listening to me? Yeah. Oh, thank God, I'm telling you, somebody needs to be a godly example to these right. children. Jesus said, I'm the door. Yeah. No man comes, no, no one comes in or out uh -huh. 
Best they come through me. That's right. right. He said, uh, all that come before me mm -hmm. are thieves and robbers. Right. Yes, there ain't, I don't care what any preacher says, any evangelist says, I don't care how famous they are, how many presidents they shook their hand. Listen to me, listen to me good. There is but one way to heaven. Amen. 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 It's not through Allah. It's not through Muhammad. It's not through rubbing Buddha's fat belly. I thank God there ain't but one door. Jesus said, I am the door. The particular only door. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. So say it, but what say? Have a slower. But get this, and I'm done. I, I'm like, oh, I just want to quit. I preach. I preach the rest of this. Maybe I'll get some other night. Whatever God wants. I ain't got to where I thought I was going, but I'm just preaching. But listen to this. He said, "My sheep know my voice." Amen. They tell me that in biblical days when all those shepherds would put their sheep into that sheepfold at night, the next morning maybe they had to go to town and do business or something, they would come back and the porter would step up and he would verify that that was indeed the shepherd of right. one of those yes. folks. Because yeah. there was imposters that would come right. in and try to oh, yeah. steal the sheep oh, away. Right. Come on, come on. I don't know about you, but I ain't got much use for a sheep thief. Amen. 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 That's right. I'm glad you're here. If you go to another church, I'm so glad you come tonight. And, and, and if you if you don't have a church, Brother Mayo, I'm sure would love to have you come and attend this church. But if you are a member somewhere, you ought to be there on Sunday. I thank God to back your preacher and your church. Amen. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. I felt like I hit a little bit of a slide right there. <laughs> Brother Bible said years ago, said, said if you plow along and you hit a stump, uh -oh. he said, bless God, don't go around it. Just go back up, plow it out of the <laughs> Amen. Amen. God, thank God for this talent that this group has. Indeed, I ain't that wonderful. I couldn't say enough kind words about the Lord just singing. Mm -hmm. It was wonderful. Amen. I mean, I'm a redneck from North Carolina, oh, and there ain't amazing. nothing stirs my heart like bluegrass. Uh -huh. Amen. 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 And to hear that, hear that mandolin and that band, glory to God. Hear it, see that, but that stirs something in me. Amen. 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 That's, that's my own country type stuff. Amen. Amen. Ain't that right, Brother Ken? Yeah. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, God gave that talent to you for the local church. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. And I don't know, I know where Brother Mayo goes. <laughs> I don't know about you, know people. So I'll preach to you for a minute. Amen. God expects you to be here on Sunday, not singing somewhere. Amen. Wouldn't it be something for him to be the pastor of this church and him to call them in and say, Y'all, y'all want to get somebody to fill in for me? Uh -oh. I've got to go sing somewhere else. Not uh -oh. nah. oh. <laughs> You may have to get me out of here. <laughs> I'm just trying to get you to understand. God gives that talent to that local. Right. There's nothing wrong with you going to a revival meeting no, and helping God. that revival. Right. There's nothing wrong with you going and singing at a funeral and encouraging them. Right. That's wonderful. Thank yeah. God for that. But when it comes church time. Come on. Right. Come on, right. brother. I wouldn't set a standard no higher for him than I would the rest of the group. Say amen. I amen myself if I have to. Sometimes my crowd gets quiet in North Carolina and I just have to stop every once in a while and say amen, preacher. That's good stuff. Amen. The order of the house of God. Jesus said, my sheep, no mother. I don't want him to show up at church down there where I'm supposed to be uh -huh. and speak uh -oh. and me not be there to hear. Right. 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 Matter of fact, I'm so paranoid <laughs> that he might pass by when I'm in there uh -oh. that I hardly ever don't hey, go. Hey, hey, we had to leave Sunday after church Sunday morning uh -huh. to get down here Monday night. Right. We went to come to the middle of Alabama somewhere over where that rolling tide bunch are. I know y'all don't know about that. 
And uh, we spent some time there to come on down on Monday to make the trip at least. But what I'm trying to get you to understand, uh, come 6 o'clock Sunday evening, I was looking at my phone thinking, oh, Brother Jamie's uh, fixing to, to step into my place. And, yes. and he's going to open the word of God. And I said, God, under my breath, I said, God, help him. Yes. God, touch him. Amen. 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 And about 7.30, I was already calling my wife saying, tell me how the service went. Amen. Amen. You know why? Because that's my place. Give her my people. Yes, that's my church family. Yes, Amen. Yes. Amen. Now, Brother Ken pastors about an hour away from me. Amen. I go over and preach for him, and they'll take the service to sing and shout and not even get let me preach and give me an offer. And I say, glory to God. What a blessing. Amen. And uh, yes. it's bad when they pay you not to preach. <laughs> Amen. But uh, we went over there, and, and, and that night God got to stir it. And he said, Brother Massey, come up on the platform. And I stepped up there, and God had done told me, huh, oh, boy, don't you touch nothing. Uh -huh. And God was dealing with hearts while they were singing. Uh -huh. And I mean, there was a pool of God of conviction there. And over here on this side, there was a little old, what was she, 18, 19 year old girl sitting there that had been coming to church for just a few weeks. <laughs> And the preacher said, when he stepped up behind the, uh, the pulpit, he said, I don't know what you're waiting on. on she was now. sitting there with tears come running on. down her face. Come and on. he said, I don't know what you're waiting on, but why don't you just turn loose and come on? Yes, yes. Man. Right. And I watched that little girl come up out of that seat and come to an old-fashioned altar and get right with God. Amen. 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 You know why she did that? Because she'd seen others using the old. Right. She right. knew where to go. Amen. She has no church background, no recognition, oh. no church affiliation until she started coming over there. Amen. Just started coming with one of the young boys. And, uh -huh. and, uh, and, and she, she just, God gripped her heart and got a hold of her. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Preacher told me that I'll be all right if I tell that. He said a few weeks went by and said, she come in, she didn't know nothing. She had them dresses on way up here. Oh. Oh. Yeah. And, uh, he said a few the other Wednesday night she come in and had one down to her ankles. Amen. He said she come around and shook my hand. I said, he said, girl, I like that long skirt on your yes. boy. You look so pretty. She said, I've been noticing some things. Come on. Yeah. 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 He didn't have to preach it. Oh. Where did she notice it? By the people around Amen. her. Amen. Amen. Help us, Lord. Yeah. I'm trying to help us to realize somebody's watching us. <laughs> Maybe somebody down on the job. Uh -huh. Yeah. Hey Amen. I, I was at work one day and, and I traveled between construction sites on my job. And, and uh, it was one of them days where I'd been kind of burdened about some things and I got to pour my heart out coming down the highway and God got in the car with me. Y'all ever have a little vehicle? Amen. Amen. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just clutch it. I mean, I'll be back on something you like. Man. <laughs> but I was driving down the road. And it got foggy in the inside of that, that side of that work car. Yes, sir. And I got to I got to where I couldn't pray. I got to where I couldn't talk. I, I mean, I was just a ball it. And it was my heart communing yeah. with his heart. And it was just like God himself was in that vehicle God. hugging on me. God. God. And I finally got to that work site and I pulled in. And, and them fellas down there with them track hose and all that machine are going. And I just stopped and put it in park. Yeah. And I thought, Lord, I've got to, I've got to get him a composure. You hear these men gonna think I'm crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the more I thought about trying to get a hold of my emotions, the more my emotions got away from me. And I was a weeping and a begging God. I was just saying, Glory to God. And glory to God. Bless your name, Lord. You're so good to me. I don't know why you love it on me. And I was a praying on him. And all of a sudden, one of them workers got off of that track uh oh And he come up there. I guess he's coming to see if I was all right. <laughs> I was. And by then, I was just looking down, just weeping. Yeah. And I heard a knock on the window of the car. Yeah. And I just looked at him in tears and snot just flowing. Uh, yeah. Amen. And Come he on. said, are you okay? Yeah. And all I said was this. Uh-huh. Amen. And he yeah. went. Right. <laughs> and walked away. Amen. <laughs> It didn't bother God again. He just squeezed me in. And I thought, boy, what a blessing to be on display for God. Uh, to where right. sinners can see Amen. that God is real in my work. Amen. Amen. He's not just real from 10 to 11 on Sunday morning. Right. Right. He walks with me and he talks.
talks me. He rides up and down the road. That's right. Amen. You ever had him ride with you? Amen. I've told this so many times. My daddy had congestive heart failure, and I'm done. My daddy had congestive heart failure for about 15 years or over. He battled that. Uh -huh. And ever so often, you know how it is, he would get to his lungs and fill up with fluid. He'd get to where he couldn't breathe. Right. We would call the ambulance, rush him to the <laughs> hospital, and they would put him on all the diuretics and get the fluid off. And sometimes they'd have to literally drain it out of his lungs and, right. yeah. and liters of fluid. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, one night about 2 o'clock, I was sound asleep and the phone rang. Uh -huh. And when the preacher's phone rings at 2 o'clock in the morning, it ain't ever good. Right. Hardly ever. Oh. And I, I answered the phone beside the bed and I said, it was my mom. She said, the ambulance is on the way. Get down here. Uh -huh. And boy, something inside of me said, boy, it's bad this time. Oh. And I jerked my clothes on and run down the hill. I live uh, probably here to the other side of the parsonage from my mom and them. Maybe a little further. Right. And I hurried down there and got there just as the ambulance was pulling in the driveway, Brother Ken. And I watched them EMT workers. I watched them get my daddy on that stretcher and went through all the questions that they always ask and oh, yeah. what kind of medicines and everything. And they yeah. finally got him in. I didn't think they was ever going to get him in that ambulance right. and get him to the hospital. Right. I thought, man, can't you talk about this on the way? Yeah. 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 Amen. And, uh, and they finally got him in that ambulance and they. they him and mom was in the back and they were going toward the hospital and I got in my daddy's pickup truck and sitting there in the driveway uh -huh. and I got in it and I pulled out behind that ambulance going to the hospital that night at 2.30 in the morning right. all by myself. Come on. That was the longest ride for 12 miles to the hospital I've ever took. Right. And I remember thinking on that trip, daddy ain't gonna make it. But I felt him get in the vehicle with me. Uh, I'm talking about my Heavenly Father. Yeah, amen. And I felt him squeeze, and this is all I heard the voice of my shepherd say. Come on. It's going to be okay. Amen. Amen. No big revelation. No. Yes. It's going to be okay. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I'll never forget that night up there on Interstate 240 in Asheville, North Carolina. I'd take you within five foot of the spot yes. when he hugged me up and said, uh -huh. it's going to be okay. Yeah. Yes, yes, sir. And we went to the hospital and a week later, Dad was back at home and doing better. And we got to keep him a few more years. So you listening to me. Yeah. I'm talking about hearing the shepherd's Voice. Amen. In order to hear the yeah. shepherd's voice, you have to have a relationship. Amen. Right. Right. My sheep. Come on. Right. Right. Come on. My sheep. That's right. Everybody don't hear his voice. Only his sheep. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. I sent a text out to my church family this morning. It's been on my heart all day since I got out of bed. And, I, and this is what my text said to my church this morning. How long has it been since you heard him speak? Right. That's good. Amen. If it's yeah. been very long, you need to get something out of the way. Indeed, <laughs> now, my daddy, when I got married, all we, we there was three, four of us kids, three brothers and a sister. And she was the odd one out. She was the first born, thank God. She didn't have to, she was married and gone with her. The rest of us showed up to our show of trouble. But every one of us kids to this day <coughs> have a key to mom and dad's house. Oh, right. yeah. And you may think that's strange, but no, we're family. No, no. Now, so I carry the tradition on. I've got three kids, and my son got married about a year and a half ago. And uh, my wife, I said, I didn't need you to take the house key by and loads and get a key made. Yeah. And she said, Did you lose your key? <laughs> I said, No. <laughs> I said, we're fixing to gain a daughter. Amen. And I said, if she's part of the family, she needs to keep this house. Right. I may be somewhere and need to call her and say, go and cut it's something it's off. And I right. I'm getting to that age where I'm forgetful. Oh, man. Oh, man. I'm going to leave something running and need somebody to <laughs> So I, I told her. So I walked up to her when she got that key and I, I handed it to my daughter in law. Yeah. She said, what's this? I said, it's key to the front door. She said, why are you giving me a key to your house? I said, are you marrying my son? Right. She said, yeah. <laughs> I said, you want to be part of this family? Yeah. I said, you got a key to your family's house? Yeah. 
Actually, you got to keep that. Yeah, amen. Amen. That's good. That's good. I know that some people couldn't do that, and I'm not throwing no rocks if you can. No, no. I mean, I know there's some people that you just can't give a key. Oh, right. Right. Exactly. Amen. 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 But what I'm trying to get you to understand is this is a family. Right. Amen. When it comes down to the church, we're a family. Amen. Right. 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 And there ain't no big eyes and little U's. We're all just old sinners saved by grace. Yes. Amen. Lord. Ain't that right? Amen. We're all just sheep. Amen. Right. Yeah. Now, when you go to the stockyard, I've been around cattle all my life. I'm trying to hush. Oh, I've been around cattle all my life. My daddy got me involved in them. We, we still got a few cattle. Uh -huh. And when you go to the stockyard, they'll grade them cattle. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Right. They grade them by their sex. They grade them by their build. Right. Right. Ain't that right? Yeah. And the better the build, the more money they burn. Right. Yeah. The sorrier the build, the less they burn. Right. But my shepherd Come on. doesn't grade his sheep. Right. Amen. Amen. He says, Hey Lamb, how are you, Lamb? God bless you, Lamb. You're such a blessed lamb. You're a blessed you're a blessed lamb. Right. Thank you. Right. Amen. He don't show any. Uh -uh. He's no respecter of persons. Amen. 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 That means you can have just as much God as the preacher's God. That's right. Amen. You can have just as much a testimony as anybody else. You can have a song just like everybody else. You say, I can't sing like them. God never told you to sing like them. That's right. Amen. 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 You can have a song on your heart. You don't have to be the best singer in the world well, to right. sing the song God gave you. Yeah, yeah, that's right. right. Amen. Ain't that a blessing? Yeah, yeah. My sheep yeah. know my voice. That's right. And a stranger, they will not. <coughs> Makes me wonder about all these people that are following all these voices. Right. right. Exactly. That's right. That are contrary to this book. Right? That's right. That's right. Exactly. Now I don't expect people to follow me if I quit following that book. Right. 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 Paul said, "Follow me as I follow Christ." Amen. Right. In other words, the minute I quit following him, you quit following me. Right. 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 Amen. Don't follow me into sin. Don't follow me into something that's going to be right. negative on my life and yours. Come on. Right. Amen. Come on. Right. Right. Say amen. 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 In the mountains of North Carolina, they've taught the people, you need to follow the preacher whether he's right or wrong. No. No. And I thought, goodness gracious. <laughs> and we got so much grandma and papa religion. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I heard a preacher in our country say one time, he said, you know what the Bible says? Just grin and bear it. Oh. <laughs> I said, it don't say that in the NIV. <laughs> Ain't it amazing? He said, well, I heard somebody say, I said, it's probably your mama, but that don't mean it was God. Amen. That's good. Amen. God help us to get back and fall in love with our Amen. shepherd. Amen. You know what revival's about? It's falling in love with the shepherd again. That's right. Amen. Paul said, the reason you're in the trouble of your ends, is, or John, to that church in Revelation, is you've left your first love. That's right. Amen. It's easy for a love relationship to get cold. Oh, yeah. yeah. Me and my wife's been married July. It will be 29 years. Amen. She's the first wife and my last one. Amen. 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 I plan to stay to her Amen. until God takes one of us home. Indeed. Yes. Amen. She's mine. That's one God. Amen. I don't know that there's another woman on the planet that can put up on me. <laughs> <laughs> Say amen, Brother Gary. <laughs> he knows I'm telling the truth. <laughs> amen. amen. It takes, amen. A, takes a special woman to put up with a preacher. Well, Say amen, Sister yeah. John. <laughs> I, I don't see how you ladies even stand us. Yeah. Sometimes we can't stand ourselves. Ain't that right? <laughs> And you ladies are just as bad sometimes. You might as well nod your head. Sometimes you can't stand yourself either. And everybody knows it. <laughs> My wife will say, Why are you pouting? She'll say, Why are you why aren't you saying anything? I say, I ain't got nothing positive to say right now. <laughs> She said, well, you need to say something. I'll start saying something. I'll, for a moment, I'm complaining. Uh -huh. Can 
confess your faults one to another. Right, right. I'm still biblical. <coughs> and she'll say, I didn't know you was going to be so negative. Uh oh. <laughs> I wish you'd have just been quiet. <laughs> Amen. 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 Yes, sir. I said, I was trying to be quiet. <laughs> right. You provoked me. Yes, sir. That's good. The Bible says not to provoke a brother, don't it? Amen. It says provoke him to love, didn't it? Right. Amen. So here we are, trying to get remote. And we're all together. Yeah. And we're in harmony. Come on. Now, everybody in here that's got a family knows what I'm fixing to say. It don't take but one person out of harmony right. to get the whole car load in a bad mood. Oh, that's right. Yes, right. 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 One kid in the back seat says something smart to another one. Uh -oh. mm -hmm. And mama says, I said to shut up. Uh -huh. Daddy says, don't be so hard on them. Uh -oh. <laughs> and the little girl sticks her tongue out at the back of mama's head like, daddy's got my back. Uh -huh. <laughs> And little brother's wonder why nobody cares about him. <laughs> and they go to church and the preacher says, Good morning! Uh -huh. They say, Boy, preacher, we've been praying for you this morning. All right. All right. All right. I'm talking about sheep or social animals. Yeah. Right. right. And we might as well admit that we've all got problems. Indeed. Right. Take off the halos, Amen. the sanctimonious angel wings, right. and realize your flesh just like I am. Amen. And I tell you what we need. We need to crawl up under the cross Amen. as often as we can and beg for God's help. Amen. And say, Lord, I just need to hear your voice. Indeed. If I can hear your voice, I know the trouble will settle in my heart. Amen. If I can hear your voice, I know right. peace will flood my soul like a river. Amen. If I can just hear your voice, if I can just hear your voice, I know we're still in relationship. Amen. 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 That's good, bro. Sometimes me and my wife be driving down the road. We ain't saying nothing. Uh-oh. We're not mad. Right. We're not upset. We're not <coughs> sick. We just ain't got nothing to say. Right. Right. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you want to preach this? Oh, and, I'll, and, I'll, and I'll just reach my hand over and lay it on her leg or maybe right. her by the hand and hold yep. her hand. And we ride down the road together. In harmony. Uh -huh. How about that? Just praise. Nobody say nothing. Right. Sometimes just a look, just a touch. Right, right. Says it all. Right, right. That's why I had you give that little girl a smile. Uh-huh. That's good. Praise God. These little ones need you to know need. that somebody yes, cares. Right. It was probably Sunday. Yes, it was probably Sunday. I was preaching. I got a little boy in our church, and he's so tender hearted. He's about 11 years old. Like 10 or 11 years old. And he's so tender hearted. Uh -huh. You know, I, I, for some reason, for like sweet and high, he's just been heavy on my heart. Right. And uh, I stand and watch when we're singing, and he just stands there and just kind of stares off, and it's just like, just like he's in a bad spot. Mm -hmm. right. right. So Sunday morning when I was preaching, I got to preaching on showing love. Right. Mm -hmm. Showing love. Right. Right. It's one thing for me to tell you I love you. It's another for me to show you. Exactly. Right. That's good. And I got him up and I said, he's helping me preach. I just had my arm around him walking around with him. He's uh -huh. smiling. He's just eating that up. Somebody was showing him attention. Exactly. And everybody in the congregation was watching him and the preacher. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I asked his mama, this is what I asked her. I said, I said, do you love this woman? Come on. She said, well, sure I love him. Mm. I said, why not do you love him? Right. She said, I love him because he's mine. That's right. I gave birth to him. He's, He's mine. That's right. His daddy adopted him. That's right. His second husband yeah, he adopted yeah. this little boy. Uh -huh. And I said to his daddy, to his adopted daddy, right. I said, do you love this boy? He said, yeah, preach I do. But then he was crying. Oh, yeah. Come on. I said, now, he's not really yours. Right. And the little boy knows this. I'm well, not yeah, breaking yeah, no news yeah, right. right. yeah. I said, you chose to love him through the spirit of adoption. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. I said, you that love him because he's yours, come give him a hug. And his mama got up and, and just weeping and fell around that little boy's neck. Uh -huh. I thought she was going to have a spot. <laughs> Amen. And I said, now come and show him how 
You love him through the spirit of adoption. Right. And his adopted daddy got up there and just fell around that little old boy's oh. neck and tears are running. Yeah, amen. I said, you love him because he's yours. He loves him because of the spirit of adoption. Amen. I said, is there anybody else in here that loves this little boy? Come on. And his mamma and his great mamma was sitting there. Uh -huh. Both of them raised their hands. And I said, why do you love him to the great grandmother? Uh -huh. She said, I love him because he's a bloodline. Oh, oh my goodness. Amen. And I'm telling you, thank God. I was, I was getting happy in my heart. Amen. And I said, come and show him how being loved because of a bloodline thing. Yeah, yeah. And you know, she loved on his neck just like mama who oh, loved him because he was hers. Yeah. And daddy loved him because of the spirit of adoption. Yeah. Come yeah. on. And that little boy standing there with tears are running down his face. Yeah. You know what he needed? He needed to know somebody loved him. Indeed. That's right. That's right. That's you know really what these right. kids need to know? They need to know that this preacher loves them. Amen. This church loves them. Right. Right. Yes, when they come through that door back there, they need to know that somebody there, that they may not love them at school, and they may not love them at their house, but when there's something down there at that Baptist Amen. church, Amen. them people care about me. Amen. That's right. Yeah. Right. Amen. Yes, I said, any of you church folk love him. Yeah, that's good. And yeah. old brother Ted, one that's a prayer warrior that goes to the bar, uh -huh. he said, I love him, preacher. Yeah. I said, show him how the church loves him. Yeah. Oh, that's good. And he come up there and fell around. I said, little Lane, I said, I said, are you spilling love and tears are flying? Amen. And I said, all the rest of you kids come up here. And there's about six or seven of them come up there. And I said, I want you to know that this church loves you. Yeah. Your mom and daddy, I don't know. Your, your brothers and sisters, I don't know. Your family, I don't know. Your teachers, your classmates, I don't know. But I want you to leave this church just know, knowing that this preacher and this congregation loves you. That's good. That's good. And they, them parents and all them started just loving on him. We had spirit revival in that place. Yes, you know why? Yes, because those yes, little ones realize that church is more about than people singing and preaching, oh, yeah. preaching. Yeah. And, yeah. Right. And I'm getting something today. Come on. I heard what the preacher said, but I yeah. somebody showed me like that. Indeed. That's good. Yeah. You know what this the lost community around this church and around where you live need? They need somebody to show them the love of Christ. That's right. That's right. You know what your co-workers need that's cussing and being filthy and vile and ugly? You know what they need? They need somebody to show them the love that's of God right. and to care for them. That's right. Amen. Everybody stand